Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking stamps for all of you philatelists out there. And I know, I know, those of you who have been here before are going to say, what the hell? The guy's doing yet another topic <clears throat> as if motorcycles and concealed carry and EDC and scotch and cigars aren't enough. Coins as well. I've already had a couple videos on my Dansko coin albums over here. Easily my most popular videos. The uh, numismatists out there seem to really like it. Um, yeah, and honestly, I've been stuck at home since March, like many of you have, working remotely, and I've taken advantage of it. I've done projects all over the house. Um, I've, I think I've had four 10-yard dumpsters delivered and taken away full with various home improvement projects. But I've also been using the time to organize and get back into some of my other more esoteric hobbies like coin collecting and stamp collecting. And having shown these before, I've had a number of people ask about the stamps. How did you organize them? What do you use? And so these are them right here. Um, I did a lot of research. The stamps, when I pulled them out of the basement, like I did with the coins, they were in a number of different old, dirty, dusty, torn up, cover falling off albums. And I wanted to find something much nicer. And that's where we came up upon the Mystic Stamp Company American Heirloom Hingeless Album. And that's what I have right here. I'll pull one out. Fair warning, these things are not cheap. They're probably $130 per volume. This volume spans from 19, or 1847 to the 1930s. And then it goes 1930s to 50s or 60s. And then on to the 80s. I have the first three albums. That pretty much covers all the stamps that I had in my collection and quite frankly the ones I'm most interested in. You can see they're very high quality, nice thick pages, plasticized on some of them. There's Mr. Jefferson right there. They come with information, I really like it, on every stamp that you'll see on the right hand page. There's information on the left on those stamps. Now here, I am kind of proud of this one. This is the newest edition. This is the Scott number one, Benjamin Franklin, five cent stamp. The first stamp ever issued by the United States in 1847. The number right here, that is a authentication number. I did have this stamp when I purchased it it was authenticated you can see here the hinge system so if you had a stamp you just place it behind the plastic hinge or the plastic uh, protector since I have this one and another one it kind of du duplicates it and then it's page by page you see of course the older stamps are harder to come by I do have a couple 1851s. You can see here, they have been canceled. And again, if I wanted to know more about an 1851 orange brown Washington, I can read right over here where it talks about the stamp, the line, you know, the various um, descriptions of the stamps. The earlier stamps were all presidential um, portraits. Honestly, not terribly interesting or exciting because they're all kind of repetitive. You really get into the weeds on colors. Um, you know, here's a here's a rose one versus a pink one, um, a yellow green. For a guy like me that is colorblind, it makes it very difficult. So they're not terribly exciting. There's a Jackson. That's actually a nice stamp. It's heavily canceled. Um, I tend to like the ones, as we go through again, the grills are very expensive, hard to come by. 
Here's some pictorial ones. Again, these are heavily canceled, so they're not the greatest. And, you know, for those of you that are true stamp collectors, you know that most stamps are very inexpensive, especially canceled and in the lower grades. Um, but this has, has every stamp by Scott numbered. For those of you that aren't aware, the Scott Cut Catalog is kind of the gold standard for stamps, and every stamp ever made has a number corresponding to when it was issued. That allows you to look them up, know what you have, see the values. Um, so all of these you go through. Now here you start seeing some of the more, what I think are the more interesting stamps. Those that have uh, pictographs, you know, some very nice, you know, that one right there. Truly some beautiful artworks. If we wanted to look at Hardships of Immigration, this Scott number 290, come right over here and it says, Hardship of Immigration, a gray violet stamp, illustrates the plight of many immigrants. Often they found themselves stranded in the middle of the prairie with sick or dying animal harnessed to their wagon, which is what is shown there. You can see the horse laying there keeled over. And that's what I really like about stamp collecting. I mean, you can learn a tremendous about it, amount of history in these for just a couple bucks each. Here's a 1901 Pan American, the Fast Express Locomotive stamp. Fast Lake Navigation, that would be here in the Great Lakes. The Automobile, Niagara Falls. So we came over here and looked at the fast express train. Tells you the color and recognition of the tie that truly united the East and West. This issue illustrates the Empire State Express four car locomotive, truly modern machine could travel over a hundred miles per hour. Quite a while ago. So this is a, this is, these are truly great albums. I think for education purposes, a beautiful and safe way to store your stamps. So I highly recommend if you have the opportunity and the wherewithal to spend the money on these mystic albums. And like I always say, no, I'm not sponsored by them because I have very few subs. So there's Volume 2, Volume 3. This is, I bought a volume, it was called Back of the Book Stamps, which refers to, I had to learn the lingo, to the type of stamps that aren't normal issue. You see here, airmail special delivery, special delivery, certified mail stamps, parcel post stamps, hunting stamps, etc. And so you'd go through to find the ones you have. So here I've got some special delivery stamps. These are in decent condition. The motorcycle delivery stamp right there, which is kind of cool for us motorcycle riders. I've got several of those. Volume 2 has some, I think, some really nice stamps in it. A lot of commemoratives. <clears throat> These are what are known as Farley's Follies, but some beautiful stamps. So you can see here, you have Crater Lake, Acadia Park, Glacier National Park, Zion, Great Smoky Mountains, with the corresponding information over there. <clears throat> There's a Mothers, there's a Great Seal of the United States stamp, special delivery, some other commemoratives. I really like the commemoratives, again, because of the stories. California Pacific Exposition. For those of us here in Michigan, here's the Michigan Centennial stamp from 1935. If we looked over here, Michigan became the 26th state of the Union in 1837. Okay, I didn't know that, now I do. Originally settled by the French, 
That I knew. So again, when you have a lot of time, as some of us do now, you can learn a lot. These are the Army commemoratives. You have Jackson and Scott there. No, Lee and Jackson there. The Military Academy at West Point. So here are Civil War generals. You'd be hard pressed to get Confederate generals on a stamp nowadays. You have the Navy, for those Navy veterans there. Which I think are the Naval Academy seal there. More commemoratives. This one, King Kamehameha in Hawaii. This is from the Convention in 1937, Asheville, North Carolina, Great Smoky Mountain Plate. And if you're interested, I can get into more details on, you know, page by page on these. I have quite a few in volumes two and three. And then, anyway, I do have a stock book here, which I purchased. I believe I've got this from Lighthouse for all of my stamps that are duplicates. You can see here. They're behind a protective sheet, which keeps them all nice and safe. Here's some my US ones, these are some more modern ones from the 60s. And then I also have a lot of international stamps, so obviously Canadian ones. Number of Italians. These are all 30s, 40s, and 50s vintage. Same with the Germans here. And on and on. A nice way to keep them all protected. These all came out of just loose books and envelopes and bags before I took the time and energy to organize them all. So just a brief tour of organizing my stamps using the Mystic Stamp Company American Heirloom Hingeless Collection. I hope you like this quick look. If you did, please subscribe, hit the like button, hit the bell button. If you're interested in any more of the coins as well, let me know. I'm happy to show them. And with that, thank you very much. We'll see you next time here in the arena.